But we want to mention now, as we close up with everything from MediaMonarchy.com, and we're going to get into all the latest from Cyberspace War and Food World Order, we first want to note a few other things in the alternative media world. I just published yesterday the third installment of the Media Monarchy mixtape, this time for the summer solstice. We keep it together, the better, the weather, and we like it that way. This hour-long mixtape features some new and old favorites of mine from Yancey of Sigur Ross, Queen, She and Him, Sloan, NXS, The Jam, Hefner, Gene, Gil Scott Heron, Arab Strap, and tons more. Fast fun for the summer sun. And can't all be news and politics all the time. As you may know, I'm a radio guy from Back East, music director at a non-commercial 950-watt radio station for many years. During that, concurrently to that, I started to investigate 9-11. And then when I moved out west, I moved the alternative news, politics, conspiracies, and cover-ups to the front, and I still love music and media and film and all those things. So that's our third mixtape, and again, we noted on there, I never really meant them to be a seasonal thing. Our first mixtape came out right around Christmas, and that was my end-of-the-decade favorites. And, of course, Christmas right around the solstice, all the pagan holidays. Then mixtape number two for spring was out on the spring equinox, and now this one out right around the summer solstice. No, I haven't gone all occulty. It just kind of happened that way. And, again, I'll try and maybe step up the production of the mixtapes because hopefully you guys enjoy them as half as much as I do. We also, again, want to mention the latest episode of The New World Next Week for June 24th. It's the 35th episode of The New World Next Week. McChrystal out, Mon Satan, and Napolitano versus Franklin. Of course, McChrystal out. We have already covered in the first hour for you on this episode 175 of MediaMonarchy.com. But Monsanto and Napolitano, we're going to get into on FoodWorldOrder.com and CyberspaceWar.com, respectively. And something I'll just briefly throw out, because I, <laughs> I, can't, I can't keep it quiet anymore. It's not perfect yet, but we've been working on a New World Next Week dedicated site and we're starting it out on blip.tv. So you can check out newworldnextweek.blip.tv. We've got our most recent, I believe, five or so videos up there. And they provide a feed, an iTunes feed, to where you can download the videos of the New World Next Week. They're in super high quality right now. If you subscribe, you're going to get the full high quality AVIs straight from CorbettReport.com, and they run a few hundred megs. I realize maybe not everybody wants that coming down their pod catcher. So again, we're still working out the kinks, but New World Next Week, not blip, not TV is there as well. NewWorldNextWeek.com. So having mentioned that and mentioned my man James Corbett of CorbettReport.com, the latest episode, 134, Lessons in Resistance, Culture Jamming. There's only one way to get people out of the matrix. you got to reach in and pull them out. But how best to do it? This week, we try and learn from the best, including the aforementioned arrested in Toronto outside G20, Charlie Veach of the Love Police, cveach.org, V-E-I-T-C-H. And also, Bruno Bruweiler is also on this episode 134 of CorbettReport.com. Again, very, very timely. James Corbett has a great video Skype interview with Charlie Veach. You can check that out in its entirety on YouTube.com slash CorbettReport. As well, the latest videos, the Sunday update from this past Sunday, June 20th, climate consensus, carbon controls, and truther convicted. That would be the aforementioned Bruno Brewweiler of We Are Change LA. And of course, the ongoing climategate.tv. 
But we've got to mention a must-see and must-share new article and video from James Corbett of CorbettReport.com, The Meaning of Austerity. His latest viral video and article, I believe at last glance when I looked at it yesterday, has 15 plus thousand views on youtube.com slash Corbett Report, and it's been reposted all around the web, InfoWars, Global Research, everywhere. So we owe it to ourselves and to James to take a look at this. And what we'll mention, and what I what I told James myself, this word, austerity, was the word I first heard when the new financial world order was beginning tangibly around us in the fall of 2008. That again, Webster Tarpley was the first person I heard back in 2008 using this word austerity, saying, now watch out, they're going to bring austerity measures in. And we've seen now this word come in, apropos of nothing. And again, the mainstream media doesn't explain it to you. They don't tell you anything about it. It's just there and you're supposed to take it. But let's just get the basic dictionary definition that in economics, austerity is when a government reduces its spending and or increases user fees and taxes to pay back creditors. Austerity is usually required when a government's fiscal deficit spending is believed to be unsustainable. Now, of course, our international central banksters, it's all unsustainable. It's all zeros and ones. We give them a dollar and they loan out ten. They get rich, they throw us the crumbs. It's a boom and bust system that they've all been behind for quite some time. It's like the aforementioned House of Rothschild. But let's get into CorberReports.com. <laughs> CorberReport.com's meaning of austerity. It's an old trick to couch a painful reality inside of a flowery platitude. We hear it all the time in our daily lives, and for the most part, we know how to read between the lines when someone tries to do it to us. When your doctor tells you that this will only hurt a bit, you know enough to brace yourself for a painful procedure. When your boss tells you that he has an exciting new project for you to work on, you know you're about to get saddled with a job that no one else wants to do. When a salesman tells you that a used car is a fixer-upper, you know that you're looking at a lemon. Similarly, when the IMF tells a nation that they need to implement austerity in order to get themselves out of a financial crisis, here too lies a gaping chasm between the language and the reality. Austerity is one of those Orwellian terms that has been injected into our political discourse precisely because it is a nice sounding word for a very painful reality 